think that's a important pound. Important pound. SEC approves Bitcoin spot ETFs in milestone for digital assets. What is up, everybody? If you're a replay viewer, right off the bat, hit the timestamps if you want to skip around to the video. I'm going to start talking about the, the big news. Bitcoin spot ETF. Maybe you've been in the space for like a month. Maybe you've been here five years. Either way, congratulations. Because if you're in the crypto space, if you're interested in staying in the crypto space, whether you're involved in it, investing in it, whatever, this is such a massive step forward. This is such a critical step forward. So that's why I gave the pound. But I want to talk about the news. Uh, and I also just want to talk about why what's happening now. Now is a segue, is a, a very important segue into now another countdown. What I have been saying, I think, is even a more important countdown for you and I, uh, especially if you're an altcoin holder. This is January 17th. I'm going to discuss it a little bit, but I'm going to dig into the charts as well. We're going to look at the Bitcoin dominance chart. We're going to look at the Bitcoin charts. We're going to look at the ADA charts. We're going to look at Ethereum, a little bit of AVAX. I want to talk some altcoins because guess what? Altcoins outperforming Bitcoin on this news. So please, if you're here right now, you're not a subscriber, smash the subscribe. Hit the like button for me, turn notifications on, and I appreciate you in the live stream. Somebody said, new history has begun. It really is a historic moment. So that's the news. I, I, there's so many people talking about this. I wanted just to point out Brad Garlinghouse. And I, I, and I wanted to do this because CEO at Ripple, because there have been players on the front lines fighting for the crypto space. And I'm just, I'm simply grateful for them. I think of Brad Garlinghouse over at Ripple. I think of uh, Armstrong and Paul Graywall, the chief legal officer of Coinbase. I'm so grateful for what they're doing on the front lines, fighting for us, uh, because we've been truly in this kind of war, right? And, and all out war. Elizabeth Warren, her anti crypto army, Gary Gensler, a part of the anti crypto army. So he said, the significance of this moment cannot be overstated. Congrats to all who have worked to get Bitcoin spot ETFs approved. Today's news is further legitimization of crypto as an asset class. I expect this will be yet another catalyst for institutional investment adoption, ideally leading the industry to focus outside primarily speculative to broader real world use cases underpinning that legitimization. So, and, and real quick, I'm just checking to make sure this is working on, on X because once again, everybody... It is. I'm not used to it. If you're on X, by the way, hit that, hit that share, hit that repost right now. So that's Brad Garlinghouse. And let's take a little piece of, of Gary. There he is, Gary. Let's take a little piece of his, his letter. Now, he says, the statement, he says a lot, but the U.S. Court of Appeals, this, this is what's crazy about it. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia held that the commission failed to adequately explain its reasoning and disapproving the listing and trading of Grayscale's proposed ETP. They lost to Grayscale, as you remember. So basically, he's just conceding. He's basically like, based on these circumstances and those discussed more fully in the approval order, I feel the most sustainable path forward is to approve the listing. So he's basically like, it's, it's, it's a very negative approval, which really doesn't matter. It's an approval. But he said, while we approve the listing and trading of certain spot Bitcoin ETP shares today, we did not approve or endorse Bitcoin. Are you kidding me? Absolutely insane. I appreciate this. I had, to, I had to shout this out. $99 super chat. Totally, you did not have to do that at all. I appreciate you for that. I appreciate you for watching. I wanted to just bring that up and, and just say I'm grateful. You, did not, you do not have to send me a $99 super chat, but that is incredibly meaningful, and I really appreciate your support. They said Ada Gang, Cardano Gang, baby. We're going to get to the Cardano charts. So he approved it. Cryptos are us. He says, this must be the most bearish approval statement I've ever seen by the SEC. Basically, Gary says he approves the Bitcoin ETFs because he had no choice due to the Grayscale winning its case. And it's true. But now this is starting to work into a bigger thing. And I can't tell you, I can't even tell you how hype I am that we're seven days from the, from the oral arguments in the Coinbase SEC case. I am so excited about this. And I don't mean to take the spotlight away from the Bitcoin spot ETF news. I really don't. But this is so massive. This is so massive. Now, I just posted this a little bit ago. I just said, Gary suing Coinbase. This is what's happening. 
Real time. January 10th. Gary suing Coinbase, the custodian of, of most of the Bitcoin ETFs. He just approved. And this is what's happening. He's suing Coinbase. We're in the middle of this huge lawsuit, right? Coinbase in the middle. Time to pay attention on January 17th when the oral arguments in SEC versus Coinbase case will take place. One point about this, and then I'm not going to spend too much time. I'll get right to the charts, everybody. One point, I just want to make this because this is, this is what has happened in the last day. Here is a chief legal officer over at Coinbase, Paul Graywall. I'm a huge fan. He said the entire Coinbase, this was after the whole mess up with SEC posting on X or getting hacked, whatever happened. Security was not there. Paul Graywall said the entire Coinbase team offers its help. We're committed to doing our part to ensure fair, orderly, and efficient markets for all Americans. It's a nice gesture, right? But there's so much more going on there. There's so much more going on there. If you are picking up what I'm putting down right now, please hit the like button if you're in the live stream. Let me know it. There's so much more going on to, on there. This is a mental, this is like a, a game of chess. The reason I say this, and I'm not going to read this huge thread I did earlier on X, but I said it's a power move by Coinbase. And that's what it was. Offering to help SEC is a power move. It's a show of dominance on the issue of crypto. Because Coinbase knows what's up. Coinbase legal team knows what's up. They know the law when it comes to crypto. It's also a show of competence in comparison to the SEC just days before a landmark moment takes place in court between the SEC and Coinbase. And the whole thing is that I'm saying here is Judge Fila, she's paying attention. Judge Fila is paying attention. And it's an amazing segue from this, from this moment, the Bitcoin ETF, the whole mess up on X that the SEC had play out. It's, a, it's such a beautiful segue into next week and the oral arguments. I don't know for sure, but I truly think they will be bringing up how the SEC, they can't even use a two-factor authentic authentication on their X account. They can't even secure their X account. Their website goes down again today. The, the, whole, the whole news announcement of the, of the actual approval, the website goes down right? The, the page disappeared. They can't even get these things right. And they're supposed to be regulating the entire, the entire crypto space. Are you kidding me? Another one. Appreciate you. Misto videos. I'm still here because of you. Another Ada gang. Love you guys. Thank you for the super chat. So Judge Fila is watching all of this. And there's other things, everybody, that will, I'm sure, be brought up in the Coinbase SEC case. Gary Gensler, publicly in 2021 before con Congress, saying that the SEC has no regulatory authority over crypto exchange. And then here he is suing a crypto exchange. Been on video stating 75% of crypto are non-securities, as many of you remember, before he was chair. Been on video touting Algorand as a great technology. You know it all. I talk about it all the time. But this is what we're dealing with right now. And I, I'm sure all of these things will be, will be kind of brought up next week. I just wanted to talk about this. It's a very interesting segue uh, into next week. So now let's talk about the Bitcoin spot ETFs, the short-term price reaction of what's going on. This was Jason Williams over here on X. He said, uh, all 11 spot Bitcoin ETF tickers are currently being added to the Bloomberg terminals of pending listing. Trading will, will, will be ready to go tomorrow. I wanted to bring that up because we're going, to, we're going to dig into the charts. It's, a very, it's very short term. We're going to be looking at, right? This is a daily chart. We're going to break it down, what's going on Bitcoin. But what's crazy to me is just the very fact that let's just go to a Bitcoin dominance. This, let's just start on the Bitcoin dominance chart. So my theory has been, as many of you know, let me zoom out. My theory has been, this is multi-year, right? The halvings are the white lines. My theory has been, Again, Bitcoin has potential stamina to reach this lower high on the Bitcoin dominance, meaning Bitcoin has a little bit more room, 60, 65%. It's a lower high Fibonacci. It's an area Bitcoin revisited uh, last year, last time, last cycle before falling, right, four years ago, before falling into the bull market, the altcoin season. So my theory has been there's, there's some room to hit this area, and the Bitcoin spot ETF could be what triggers it to, to have that last dominance pump. That's what we've been talking about. Now, it's, it's way too early to tell. I'm not going to sit here right now and say Bitcoin has failed to do that. We're, what are we, like an hour into this news? But I will say, 
in the immediate short term, look at Bitcoin dominance on this current daily candle. That's pretty interesting. Bitcoin dominance just falling to the downside right now. Now, I brought up this tweet. There's post. Trading will be ready to go tomorrow because I think we need to wait. We need to, we need to start seeing what do inflows look like, right? There's so much speculation on what inflows will look like in the first week, the first 48 hours. What are inflows going to look like? So this is a daily today off of the news, Bitcoin's body TF approval on Bitcoin dominance. It's falling. Absolutely incredible to see that. But let's see what happens tomorrow with Bitcoin dominance. Let's see what happens with inflows. Are, are we you know, under or over the speculative kind of amounts of inflow that people are, are kind of anticipating? Uh, but that's what I'm watching on, on Bitcoin dominance. And then on the Bitcoin chart, it's, it's, it's insane. Right now, with all of the, the buildup, the speculation, the hype around the Bitcoin spot ETF, tell me it's not crazy. Bitcoin absolutely respecting resistance, even with what's happening. Bitcoin has failed to break the 618 line. This is, this is a multi-year thing. This isn't a new... If you've been watching my YouTube channel, you know exactly what this is. This is the bull market doors. This is what I wait for to be broken. Bitcoin testing the lower end of that range, the 618. And just in case, there's, I'm sure a few people knew here, swing high bull market to bear market swing low. Boom. It's the Fibonacci retracement. And the very fact that Bitcoin is respecting that area, I, I enjoy it so much. I've been doing technical analysis on this YouTube channel for like six years. That is happening right now. Even with the launch of the news, Bitcoin has not broken into that area. But I digress from, from that. It is right now making a very similar move to last cycle, 618 resistance, two cycles ago. And now I'm scrolling all the way back here to 2016, 618 resistance at the Fibonacci. Bull market doors resistance is true. It is here, but Bitcoin is knocking on it. So I digress from the failure to break in because the ETF starts trading tomorrow and it will be very interesting to see now what happens with the actual short-term setup. And that is what we're looking at here. It's still... <laughs> Again, such nice structure, such nice movement from a technical perspective, even with manipulation. If you're out there and you notice what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm talking about, just tell me it's not crazy. Even with the manipulation, you know, these fake stories breaking. There was one, I think, this daily candle here. Uh, here's one yesterday, right? The false ETF approval, even though we all knew it was going to be approved. But just look at it, meaning nice structure, Pulling into the 20, the 50-day moving average. Look at the 50-day moving average pulling right into the apex of the triangle. We have the target to the upside around $50,000, very much in play right now. But what I'm talking about, if I switch the daily to the four hour, this is what I like. Just look at it. What do we wait for? At least me, this is what I wait for all of the time when tracking some triangles. Breakouts and then just throwbacks, right? Just coming back down, testing this general vicinity, the apex, the upper trend line. And this is really what has happened, even with the, the spot Bitcoin ETF news. Now, here's where we are. And I don't know. This is why I have this triangle here. This is why I do these things. So I can just watch and see how, how Bitcoin is going to react on the short term. But we have the $50,000 target. And if Bitcoin, for some reason, doesn't manage to break out, even with tomorrow starts trading, maybe there's some positive news around it in, in terms of inflows uh, or just clues in terms of what's going on. Maybe it does pump to 50 but I'm just going to be analyzing. Again, put aside the hype of it all. Put aside, put aside the emotions. Put aside the headlines. The charts are still very much intact, being respected. And it's almost like a normal looking chart, even if this Bitcoin spot ETF stuff wasn't happening. So the support to the downside, upper trend line, around 43,800. The entire apex of the triangle itself really goes down to around 42,500. So it would be very interesting to see if is Bitcoin going to kind of cruise down, test that area, going back to the daily chart. That's a meaningful move if it were to do that because it would be kind of meeting the 20 and the 50-day moving averages. The reason I bring that up is because those moving averages are, are so crucial in this higher high, higher low story of Bitcoin in a bull environment. And if Bitcoin does not manage to hold those areas, we have big targets to the downside, right? So... Uh, and and uh, an obvious target to the downside is $37,000, right? So it's going to be very interesting. 
and and by the way, I should just say, if Bitcoin fails and does that, it will be failing at this entire bull market door area, and the question would be answered. The question is, is it different this time? And then the answer would be, well, obviously not. But we're at we're at the we're at this like point of time where we're going to find out if it's different this time. That's why I like the charts because I'm just I don't like sitting here guessing and saying I think it's going to be different this time. We're going to break the bull market doors. But I really am enjoying watching this technical move play out. Fifty thousand dollars to the upside on the weekly. It brings us in and through the six one eight line right here around forty eight thousand dollars. So that fifty thousand dollar target there. Bitcoin will be breaking that area if it hits that target. If it closes a weekly candle, Bitcoin will be doing something it's never done before. Incredibly bullish for, I would say, Bitcoin and for all of crypto. So, uh, and, and I don't know why I think I'm always constantly online checking X, checking the news, checking what's going on with crypto. And so I, I realize there's people out there that actually aren't doing that all the time. So if, you are, if you're new in the live stream, did the ETF get approved? Just got here. The answer is yes, Mark C. It got approved. Nice car in your profile picture. It got approved. Gary put out a statement. It was a negative statement. He basically talking about how Grayscale, after their loss to Grayscale, they had no other choice. But he did, he did make it a point to mention they approved the listing, but he doesn't approve Bitcoin. He doesn't endure, he doesn't endorse Bitcoin. So yes, it was approved. Um, so that's Bitcoin though, everybody. Look at, I mean, it is, this is a four-year wait for us. I've been doing these YouTube channel, these YouTube videos, four-year wait to get here, knocking on the bull market doors. Been talking about it in a lot of these live streams. I don't mean to just continually talk about the same thing, but come on. This is like an exciting thing. And the reason why, in case you're wondering, is it's not just that it's happening, but we have a clear target to the upside. We have clear narrative that could drive Bitcoin into, the, into this area. And potentially above the area. The thing that's so exciting about it is not that it's happening even, right? It, it happened last cycle in the bull market. It's, it's because the Bitcoin halving is over here. Previous cycles, it happens after the Bitcoin halving. This would be, this would be a first, and that's a big deal. So let's go to some altcoins right now. ADA, 58 cents, just touching 58 cents. Ethereum. Around twenty five thousand, or I, oh, I always do this. 20, around two thousand five hundred forty AVAX, around thirty nine. But I think if you look at these, look at these altcoins pumping on the news. So foundationally, we just made a note: Bitcoin dominance is falling, and it's because these altcoins are pumping. So here's the ADA BTC chart. Such an interesting, crazy chart to just look at right now off of Bitcoin spot ETF approval. On the short term, at least, right? This, this doesn't mean this is going to continue to the upside, but that is something to really watch out for. So let's start for the, for the sake of time, time stamps as well. I'm going to start right now in Cardano. I'm going to look at Ethereum. I'm going to look at AV, AVAX. And we're going to try and just tell the story of what's happening here with, with, the, with the altcoin. So starting on ADA, Cardano. And if you're a Cardano holder out there, ADA gang, smash the like button for me on your way in. Weekly, A to BTC, nice bounce off of the 20-week so far, right? Now, what we're waiting for is this shift. The 20-week hasn't even crossed the 50-week moving average, meaning bull cycle, altcoin season is, you know, it's over here, right? So we're entering this phase. As Bitcoin is getting ready to knock on the bull market doors, crypto is getting ready for a bull market, Bitcoin halving is not even here yet. The pivot to that, that era is right here on the A to BTC chart. And technically, we're getting such a similar move as last time, a bottoming out type of formation, bottoming out type of formation on A to BTC, and the 20 breaking above the 50 is something that needs to happen, and that process is playing out. On these charts, whether it's a weekly, a daily chart, we have a 50 moving average, a 20 moving average. When we're starting to break through those areas, and especially if we're getting a 20 starts cruising up to the 50, what do we always talk about? We always talk about falling back into that area to test. And this is precisely what is happening right now. You can do the flip side of that, right? In a bearish environment, the 20 is falling below the 50. What do we wait for? A pullback to that area to test, right? And it, it'll, it can wick through, but what's, what's it do? There's resistance there at that cross. 
We're looking right now for support in this general vicinity. That's what we're looking for. No guarantees it will ever, it, it's going to hold up right now. But in terms of where we are in the cycles, this is the pivot point, right? So we want to see a retest of this area on ADA BTC and then continuation, a power move for ADA, even if it's just sideways, right? Let these moving averages consolidate. That will be the story of leading us into alt season. Here's ADA on the weekly. I just want to point something out. Uh, we have <laughs> this order block, this order block on Lux Algo. This is a weekly chart. The order block on the Lux Algo indicator, and that, that's what you see here, this, this entire area of resistance. ADA has been just grappling with this entire area of resistance for since basically beginning of December when this, this weekly candle just went right into it. And right above there is a 200-week moving average, and it's an obvious piece of, of massive resistance right now. But this is what makes me say, you know, obvious, and, and by the way, there's, you know, an 80, 85-cent target to the upside. But this is what makes me say, if ADA can manage to, to break through all this resistance, I think ADA can, can do something parabolic. It can, it can do one of those moves that if you're an ADA holder over the years, you know what I'm talking about. It, does, it doesn't do a ton comparatively to other altcoins, people start saying Cardano blockchain is a ghost chain. It's not doing anything, even in price. And then all of a sudden, it explodes. This, this, is what, this is what ADA does a lot, right? So this is kind of this area of resistance that ADA has been at is a setup for that. We, yes, we do have an 80, 85 cent target to the upside uh, out of this, this triangle, this falling triangle, but descending triangle. But we have this kind of gravity, this, this next order block up here above a dollar. So the gravity to a dollar, I think, for ADA is very much in play. If crypto market is going to continue legs up, I'd keep an eye on ADA for an absolutely explosive move if it can just escape this resistance range that it's in. And it, the, the good thing is, it's been in this range for well over a month, right? So Important to note before we go to the daily chart and start talking about short-term price movement, it's out of overbought. It's fallen out of overbought. And if we go and we just, just to give you a sense of, okay, it's out of overbought, but it's not that far out of overbought. How much really upside is there? Just to give you a sense of that. When ADA really broke, and this was when Bitcoin was breaking the bull market doors last cycle, right here, right? November into December, 2020. When ADA was doing that, ADA was just below overbought on the RSI, the slower moving momentum oscillator right here, right? So we're in that same range. So if the question is, I mean, can there be an explosive move when ADA is so close to overbought? The actual answer is not only could there be, but that's kind of the setup for there to be. And I'm not saying this is definite, right? Look how much early we are in the cycle. Again, so same thing for Bitcoin is exactly the same thing for Cardano. This is the Bitcoin having here. ADA made this explosive bull market entry, boom, months after the Bitcoin halving. Right now, we are months before the Bitcoin halving. And I'm saying that because if, if ADA does make an explosive move to the upside, it's, it's, it's so pivotal. It's such a bullish indicator. But I'm also saying it because if, if ADA just consolidates and altcoins consolidate, and the time is not yet for, for crypto to take off, then it's okay. For me, anyway, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm just, I'm okay with it because the charts are saying it's not even time yet hist from historical perspective, whether that's on the Bitcoin chart going back multiple cycles, or if it's on this, this ADA chart, time is not ready yet. It's okay for ADA to pull into the 20, the 50 week and, and just continue coming down. I don't want it to, but it's okay if it does. So that's that. Now, ADA, just to give a sense of what has transpired in terms of ADA, we broke out of this triangle we were tracking. We hit just above the 45 cent target. And right now, ADA is kind of making a move of consolidation. But this is kind of, for me, I'm over, I'm over the, the, that pattern. It's over. It did its duty. Now, here's what I'm watching. And I actually want to take a clip. This is from, this is from just two days ago from a live stream. Check it out really, really quick. We had a small triangle here. Well, now we might get a larger triangle here, right? Or some other type of pattern. Maybe it will, be, maybe it will end up being an ascending triangle. Th that's what I do. I, I, I just wait now. I'm only showing that, not because I did anything. I didn't do anything. I'm only showing that for context to, to the story that's playing out before us. 
because this is what has happened. Target to the downside was hit on that one triangle. Now we have a new structure that we're waiting for. And you can see the structure is starting to potentially form. And that's really the biggest thing that I wanted that I want to discuss in, in relation to ADA and the other altcoins. We're about to look at Ethereum. We're going to look at AVAX. If you look at the ADA charts, this is a, it's a nice daily move, right? ADA is at 57 cents. But we have to keep in mind, you know, even in downtrends, we get these low, we get lower highs, right? Even in downtrends. And so right now, that's, that's where we are. As I do this video, there have been no amazing bullish confirmations. ADA hasn't broken, uh, broken above the 20 day. And this is an important note because we have an hour, 15 minutes left on this daily candle. I will be watching. I'm very curious to see what happens. The, the 20 day moving average right around 58 cents. But right now on this ADA chart, it's at the short term resistance. And right now it's really just a lower high. There's been nothing crazy that has happened in terms of ADA, but we start seeing ADA break the 20 day. It'd be great even in the next hour if it can get above the 20 day moving average around 38, close a daily candle above that area and actually start making its move to the upper trend line of uh, this new speculative ascending triangle. Because if it can do that, then we're really starting to get some structure. Maybe some resistance, once again, if ADA can pump another 10 cents, 67 cents, some resistance here. And then we're actually trickling back down. People are freaking out, thinking we're bearish again. It's a very volatile story that I think we need to anticipate. Now, if this isn't the structure we get, because I think it's really still too early to tell in terms of ADA charts, if it's not the structure that we get, my fail safe, as, you many, as many of you know, is, is I zoom out, especially on a daily, and I just look at, here's the nice move that we just enjoyed. Right? And we're talking about a multi-month multi move. And if that consolidation is going to be bigger than, than many of us want, what's, what are targets? So swing low to swing high. And we have a higher low Fibonacci for longer term consolidation. It's around 40 cents. The lower end of that goes to around 30, uh, 33 cents. And it's just an important area because again, if we go to the weekly, what were we just talking about on the weekly? We were just talking about the potential for ADA not to break into, you know, this very crazy bull environment and to start revisiting these areas down here. And where are they? They're in the 30s. So it's in play. And in my view, I just, and, and I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to really give you comfort, but the, for me, it's comfortable to know that target's in play. And I don't even think it's a bearish thing. It's just a normal thing in the state of crypto. So that's ADA. Ethereum. Ethereum's got something special going on. We, we saw Cardano's target to the upside, right? We talked about the explosive move for that, but Ethereum has something special going on because it has kind of lagged. It has, in terms of altcoins lagging, Ethereum really has been lagging. Many people getting frustrated with that. Now there's the spot Ethereum uh, ETF in play. This could be really driving Ethereum. So what I want to talk about is uh, something special going on is kind of a starting to try to escape finally this upper trend line. If we zoom in on the daily chart, you can just see, look at Ethereum. And again, is it of any surprise that trend line acted as just this place where Ethereum just grappled with it? The thing that's special is this breakout. It's kind of just trying to escape that area. So kind of like a, a very short term, not very, very short term, but pretty short term Ascending triangle for Ethereum. We just got the breakout. Again, still a little over an hour of this daily candle. Who knows? I've seen crazy, crazy daily candles that just have insane, insanely huge wicks. If all of a sudden altcoins start falling as I'm ending this live stream, it wouldn't even be surprising me if this entire green candle ends up being a wick and Ethereum's like closing at this trend line again and boom, the breakout didn't happen. But that's why the daily candle is important to me. No idea how it will close. But I really would like to see continued upward momentum on the daily candle, continued separation, not only from this short-term upper trend line, but this massive blue upper trend line, because that's the one that really matters. So this yellow triangle, target to the upside, 2,700. Okay, so shorter term, you might see Ethereum pump. It might hit this target shorter term. And that, that's a pivotal moment for Ethereum because it's a stepping stone to the target, the big target, out of this rising wedge of 4,600. And that's a huge milestone because it's testing all-time highs at that, at that point. Again, this is a, a zoomed out. This pattern goes back all the way to June 2022. This is a story. 
This is a new era for Ethereum to get there. It's not saying Ethereum's going right there, you know, in the next two months, but this could be stepping stones, hitting targets, consolidating, forming new structure, getting, it's all part of the story that we just have to, we have to bear. We have to live with kind of tracking these things and being patient for these things to happen, but it's happening. I mean, breakouts are happening on these altcoin charts that are very meaningful on the macro. So that's what we're looking at for, for Ethereum, a $4,600 target which is pretty epic if you really think about it. AVAX is, is a part of this, this group of altcoins that I've really been enjoying watching. I'm enjoying watching, I've been enjoying watching Solana. If you've been watching my, my technical analysis lately, you know I've been using Solana as kind of a leading indicator for things like ADA. And AVAX, very, very similar. So AVAX, uh, kind of a, a similar story actually with what I'm watching on ADA is the very fact that right now it's a nice daily green candle and I think this is kind of the premise, the, the lesson, or the thing to remember, the thing that I'm remembering on these altcoins right now, is the green candles are nice. The headline of the video is, is, is pretty cool, right? Altcoins pumping on Bitcoin ETF news. Bitcoin dominance is falling against altcoins right now off of the ETF news. That's cool. But I don't like getting wrapped up in just the headline of it all. What's the data saying? The data saying it's a, it's a nice green candle. But there's a lot of resistance, just like we looked at on ADA, on AVAX, there's resistance. So shorter term, we have to look for, and, and I like to look for the daily, the 20-day the moving average in this case. The, the support at the 50-day is notable, obviously, $34. Look at that. Just, it's such a bull market move. And I'm not saying we're in the bull market, but this is what, this is what on the way to all-time highs, this is the move that cryptos do, not just AVAX. It's pulling into the moving averages. They talk about all the time. Pulling into that 50. And just look at that. That's a bull market move. All the while, if we go to a, um, the RSI, check it out. Didn't fall into oversold before bouncing. That's usually an, a bear market type of move. It's kind of hanging out in the middle here. And it's bouncing to the upside. But make no, make no mistake, the 20-day moving average right around $40 on AVAX is right there. It's, it's resistance. And then maybe more meaningful is this last swing high when AVAX was kind of pumping to swing low. We have a shorter term, higher, uh, lower high Fibonacci. So it's $40 resistance, almost perfectly confluent with the 20-day. And then the lower end at the 618, right where it is now, right around $38. So $38, $39, right where AVAX is, is resistance. So uh, on these altcoins, I think the thing that I'm watching, here's AVAX. Can we break this resistance? Even in the next hour, it'd be amazing to get a daily candle today closed above these areas. But even in the new daily candle, is this continue? Or are we setting up to hit resistance and actually start consolidating? Kind of a little fake breakout here on AVAX. And, the, and truly, the same is true on the, the ADA chart. Look at this resistance. 20-day moving average resistance. This is what I'll be watching on the short term. So incredible, everybody. Just incredible. I mean, Bitcoin spot ETF is huge. I'm just kind of scrolling through. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, what's your next ADA? What's your next ADA bullish target? Well, going back to the ADA charts, my bullish target. I mean, the bullish target that we've been tracking was not hit, unfortunately, out of this triangle. But where's the weekly? Here's the weekly. Bullish targets the upside, 80, 85 cents. And again, this is the story of continuation. And this is why the, the daily, if I can go to the speculative setup, is kind of important to me. If we're looking at the speculative setup, then I actually, I'll add another bullish target, especially if this, if this actually plays out. Again, speculation. Let me get rid of this Fibonacci. So... On that weekly, there's that 80, 85 cent target, right? So let's just put it right here, like right there, right? This is a daily chart. But just to give you a sense, when we're taking into consideration the weekly, if ADA makes that continuation to hit the target out of this triangle, it's a very big triangle. It's the bear market triangle, bear market bottom triangle. That's that target. But there's a more bullish target. And that is to say, if we get the speculative ascending triangle target out of there, we're looking at above a dollar, a dollar, ten dollar, twenty. So 
those are a couple targets for you. Stepping stones, once again, this isn't like an overnight thing. There could be a lot of volatility. There would probably be a lot of bears uh, stepping into the game, meaning even if on the shorter term, it makes a move to 67, and we kind of just discussed this, boom, comes back down, we're testing 50 again, right? So these things, of these, these moves of volatility, this is exactly, and I'm, I'm glad we, we're speculating about it because these are exactly the things that happen. We're talking 20 to 30% dips when really the setup that is occurring, the structure that is occurring, if this were to happen, would be a bullish move, continuation into this next era or ADA, into the bull market, right? So, um, but that's what bull markets are made of. They're really made of that, that type of volatility. So that's what we're looking at on ADA, a couple targets. Got that 80 cent target, dollar twenty target. We got, we've got a, thanks for the super chat. We got an ICP. Got an ICP fan. I have an ICP chart. I've been I've been eyeing up ICP. Um, I remember I don't even know where it was. It was probably somewhere back here. I was like, dude, this thing. If this thing ex if this thing just exits a bottom range, has so much fast upside, and it happened, and I didn't I didn't play it. But look at that from that swing low, three hundred four hundred percent. So if you're an ICP, congrats. And I, you know, I think ICP is probably going to be a, a good performer. I know, I think supply. I think there's some controversy around tokenomics, maybe. I could be wrong, but that's it, everybody. That's it. What a day. Bitcoin dominance falling on the Bitcoin ETF news. I mean, that's probably the, that's probably the foundation of everything that's happening, but uh, the altcoins moving to the upside are going to be very interesting to track on the short term uh, and I'll just be watching these these key ones specifically on ADA right around 58 cents a 20 day moving average you go to something like um, we had AVAX up where's AVAX just to give you that number 20 day moving average around $40 and Ethereum target to the upside once again to the short term $2,700 $2,800 to the upside so really awesome day everybody if you're out there right now, we got almost 4,000. We got almost 4,000. Look at this. This is, this is like, we're starting to get close to bull market territory. I'm, I'm taking a picture of my screen. That's what I'm going to do. Because we're starting to get, we're starting to get close. To bull and people are leaving. Come on. We're starting to get close to bull market territory. The last bull market, the live streams were so fun, and we're getting there again. So uh, hit the subscribe out there. Hit that like button if you're with me right now. I appreciate you. And let's just see what crypto does off of this news and in the days ahead. Careful out there. Stay unemotional. Follow the data. That's what I like to do. I'll see you all in the next video. Have an awesome night. God bless.